afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here in this important conference. And I'd like to talk to about uh, intravitreal bevacizumab combined with infliximab in the treatment of toroidal neovascularization, secondary to the age-related macular degeneration, a case report serious. So, age macular degeneration, it's the main cause of central visual loss in individuals over 60 years old. In the USA, it's related to 55 of visual impairment and 23% of legal blindness in Caucasian population. We have two types of AMD. We have a dry AMD, the, which is responsible for 20% of cases. And we have a wet AMD, which is responsible for 8% of cases. Uh, the wet AMD, it's more devastating than dry AMD. And normally, the neovascularization of the wet AMD results scars, and these scars will produce serious central visual loss. So, in the neovascularization, we have retinal angiogenic agents. So, uh, the most common angiogenic is uh, VEGF. And the other agents, uh, as you can see there. So for the angiogenics, we have anti-angiogenic drugs. We have uh, pegaptinib, honeybizumab, bevacizumab, and the flibacept. So in this study, we used a different one. We used a infliximab. It's a, a hemcade which is a uh, anti-TNF, combined with bevacizumab, which is avastin, uh, avastin, and it, which is an uh, anti-VEGF. So we tried to block two ways of the angiogenesis, uh, the way of TNF, uh, the way uh, inflammatory way, and the way of VEGF. So the purpose of the study is to evaluate the feasibility of combined use of bevacizumab with infliximab to treat wet AMD. So the methods, the inclusion criteria were eyes with wet AMD diagnosed by fluorescent angiography and OCT, central macular thickness more than 300 micron, in each patient, in each patient, just one eye could be treated. The eyes should not have been treated before with angiogenic drugs and retinal laser. And the consent form had to be signed. And this study was approved by the uh, ethic committee from the University uh, of Goiás. All patients had a complete ophthalmology examination. The fluorescent angiography and the OCT were performed on the baseline the day after the first injection and monthly for six months. Electroretinography was performed to evaluate the retinal toxin on the baseline and three days after the initial injection. And the cataract was classified based on LOX3 system. The combination was injected in six eyes of six different patients. And two separate injections were performed in two different sites. Uh, the concentration of the drugs, as you can see there, the concentration of uh, infliximab and the concentration of bevacizumab. And after the injection, anterior chamber paracentase was performed. Results. So in the six months follow up, we did two consecutive injections in five patients and three consecutive injections in one patient. 30 days after the first injection, there were no changes in electroretinography. So the combination was not, was not toxic by the electroretinography. 
And third days after the first injection, five patients showed a decrease of macular fluid and macular thickness. One patient remained with a relevant persistence of fluid, but when you compare it with the baseline angiography fluorescein, this patient showed less leakage than three injection. This is a uh, two case, uh, one case of a patient who in the baseline had uh, a lot of fluid inside the retina, in the macula, and a big activity of the neovascularization. And one month after the injection of the combination, uh, you can see the decreasing of the fluid inside the macula. And another case is uh, a patient uh, who had a lot of fluid inside the macula and aggressive neovascularization activity. And after the injection, one month after the injection, the persistence of the fluid, uh, we can see here, but when you compare uh, with the pre-injection, this, uh, this patient shows less leakage than pre-injection. So, the, the results were good, but we had side effects. And uh, which side effects that we found? Vitrites and vasculites. One patient developed vitrites and vasculites one month after the second application. This patient was treated with oral and eye drops, prednisolone, and after 20 days after the treatment, this patient got well. So th this is a uh, staining here over the opti disc. And uh, you can see uh, the, the, the vitrates and the vasculates uh, uh, after the, 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 the second injection. And here, the patient uh, after the treatment with uh, prednisolone. So the, I don't know if you can see here because it's so light, but uh, it's, uh, it's it's uh, the leakage here so, né? and staining here. And after the treatment, you, you can't see. Né? It's not uh, uh, the leakage over here. So the another side effect, it was a uh, progression of the cataract. Two months after the first injections, two patients developed cataracts in levels by LOX3 system, as you can see here. And three patients developed cataracts in levels of the LOX3 session, as you can see here. So the FACO was performed for better visualization of the retina. After six months, the end of the study, one patient had little persistence of submacular fluid without neovascularization activity. Four patients showed a significant improvement of neovascularization. However, the neovascularization was still present, but in less activity. And one patient remained with relevant macular fluid and neovascularization activity. Uh, this is the, the best uh, case in, in six patients. Uh, it's a one follow case. In the baseline, in April of 2011, the beginning, uh, a fluid in the neovascularization activity. And after six months, uh, we can see uh, a, 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 a little, uh, probably a, a cystoid space and uh, no activity of the neovascularization. So uh, this is a, a finding table. We put uh, the, the visual acute before the treatment, 30 days after the first injection, Nine day, 90 days after the first injection, the IOP before and after the injections, and uh, the inflammatory reaction in the Ontario chamber, and the progression of the cataract. Conclusion. The combination was effective on reducing the neovascularization activity and the leakage in the macular thickness by the OCT. Although the combination did not show functional change in electroretinography, we could find side effects like vitrates, vasculites, 
and progression of the cataract. So this combination could be one more way to treat wet AMD, but a study with a large number of cases is necessary to define if these side effects will be significant and if the effects of the combination are really efficient. So this paper was published in a Brazilian uh, scientific magazine, Arquivos Brasileiros de Ophthalmologia. If someone uh, wants to uh, read full paper, can download in a PubMed. Uh, Acknowledgements uh, from Marcos Avila. He's a full professor of ophthalmology in the University of uh, Federal University of uh, Goiás in Brazil, and uh, another professor, Davi, and who's the, 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 the best, the, the, the people who was all the time with me in the, this study, and the research, the researchers in the Federal University of Goiás, William Ricardo, Luis Alexandre Clovis, and Dr. Alan Hasse. So, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. We are now open for questions. One yeah. question. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't know because it's the, the phase one of my PH. So we we trying to find some efficiency of the, the anti TNF because the TNF it's a uh, good anti-inflammatory. So we're trying to use this way to treat uh, AMD, to treat a uh, wet AMD. So I don't know what we will find about that, but I think it's a promise of something good for for the treatment of AMD. Thank you. Uh, could I ask you patients like the, uh, the age? age? Yeah, uh, where the age? Were they all similar age, age matched, or it's all different? Like no, it's similar. Uh, Sixty years old, sixty-one, sixty-two years mm -hmm. old. It's a, a, a similar age, similar. but uh, uh, didn't have uh, any treatment before. Mm -hmm. So we try to to think if the the treatment uh, it will different before because uh, if the the patient had a treatment before with uh, another drug. We didn't know if the the combination was yeah. effective. Definitely. Thank question? you. Mm -hmm. So the anti-TNF that you're using, is that uh, against the receptor or the TNF? Is it like ethanercept or pegocernercept? What are you using? And that's the first question. Sorry, I, I didn't say. Um, is the antibody directed against? So which do which you know that anti-TNF, anti -TNF, yeah. It's antibody yeah. against TNF itself? Yeah. That's fine. Yes, okay. okay. We don't know why the cataract progression because uh, we know that a, a vaccine don't uh, do the cataract, so it isn't a, a lot of inflammation to to get the cataract progression. So we don't know which the cataract grow. Thank you. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Okay.